Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCT MPBS SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LAS on a daily reporter roundup. Let's start today with you, Carla. The LA County Board of Supervisors voted Tuesday to allow schools to apply for reopening waivers. What are the details? That's right, but it doesn't mean that all elementary schools will be able to get waivers and open up immediately. The process is actually designed to be slow. So there's a limit of 30 waivers that LA Public Health can grant per week to start out. And even though the state's waiver process allows for schools up to sixth grade to apply and reopen, the LA County approach is much more narrow. It's limited to transitional kindergartners through second grade. Recognizing that some groups of students really struggled with online learning, the process is supposed to prioritize schools with high populations of low-income students who are eligible for free and reduced price meals. All of this passed unanimously, so every two weeks, LA public health officials will provide updates on who's applying and also how schools are complying with protocols as they reopen. In other news, Disney announced today it will lay off 28,000 people from their parks division, in part blaming California's unwillingness to allow it to reopen. Mike has that. Uh, Disney has made clear that they have felt under pressure recently. Uh, you know, they'd had a, a call with journalists last week really pleading for the state to reopen Disneyland, going through all of the safety protocols they have in place, why they feel that now is the right time to reopen to let people get back into the parks. However, there has been no movement forward from the states. Details on when the parks would reopen were announced back in June. They said that they were coming, but then, uh, you know, there were fires and protests and those details got pushed to the side. And it seems that the state has sort of decided that it's not worth reopening yet while COVID-19 still isn't fully under control. There's more drama happening today over the census count, this time between federal courts and the Trump administration. Caroline's been listening in and has an update. Right, so let me just remind people that a federal judge ordered the 2020 census to keep going into October. That means tomorrow is no longer the deadline to fill out the form, it's an old deadline. So you have a little bit more time, but perhaps not that much because this, yesterday the Census Bureau put out a tweet saying the agency is trying to finish counting by October 5th, which is a pretty short extension. And if you're keeping track, this is now the fourth time the census deadline has changed. And it might be a little too early to memorize this new date because the courts are still trying to figure out the legality of, of changing this deadline. And in more local census drama, some workers from the Pasadena and Southgate census offices have complained to the federal judge overseeing this case. They say thousands of households in LA may have been marked as completed by census takers, even when no response was actually collected. And in some cases, this is after only one day of census workers going to that house and not receiving a response. So there's a hearing going on right now, and I'll be watching to see how these two new issues are resolved. And finally today we've got UCLA professor John Christensen. He's the co-producer of KCET's environmental series Earth Focus and they have a new documentary out called The New West and the Politics of the Environment. It looks at the role that Senator Harry Reid played in shaping environmental politics in the West and I wonder Professor Christensen what can we learn from Senator Reid? Well if you find yourself looking for a post-debate pickup tonight then tune into KCET at 8 p.m. The word environment has become one of the most polarizing words in the American political lexicon, but it doesn't have to be that way. There is another way, and it's been shown to work in a most surprising state, Nevada. Our documentary tells the little known story of how Senator Harry Reid created a lowercase Green New Deal in a purple state through negotiation bipartisan compromise and the wily use of political power, settling water wars in favor of Native American tribes and endangered species, creating the state's first national park, protecting more than 4 million acres of wilderness, enhancing access uh, to public lands for an increasingly diverse urban population, and shepherding in a just transition to renewable energy. It could be a model for the nation Thank you, John, and thank you all at the KPCC and LA's newsroom. Thank you for tuning in. Take care of your health, your family, your neighbor, and we will see you tomorrow. You too, thanks. Uh -huh.